Golden Radio Hour. The bakers of Weber's Bread present your all-star Western Theater. Drifting along, singing a song under a western. From Hollywood comes your all-star Western Theater, starring America's great Western singers, Boy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage. Our guest today is Western Pictures' grand cowboy comedian, Smiley Burnett. My name is Cottonseed Clark, and here are the riders of the Purple Sage. Yippee-yay, yippee-o, in the day home we go. For a cowboy has to sing, and a cowboy has to yell. Or his heart would break inside of him at the gate of the home corral. When each new day is born, I go riding. Oh, the wide open plains I roam Till the sun in the hills goes hiding There will always be someone glad when I get home Yippee-yay, yippee-yo In the day home we go For a cowboy has to sing And a cowboy has to yell Or his heart would break inside of him At the gate of the home corral You know, friends, a top hand who worked one of the old-time cattle spreads usually had a string of cow ponies, each trained by the cowpuncher himself for various kinds of work. But always the cowpuncher would have his favorite mount, one that was an all-purpose horse that could be used on routine as well as special occasions. Today, Weber's bread is all-purpose, too. Weber's bread fills the bill no matter what the occasion. It's well-mixed and well-baked has a firm, even texture and a delicious flavor that blends well with other foods. And Weber's bread is always good bread. As a substantial part of your family's daily menu or served on special occasions when you have guests in for dinner, Weber's bread never lets you down. Buy a loaf of Weber's bread next time you go shopping. You'll like it. Famous for their authentic rendition of Little Darlin' Western Heart songs, the Riders of the Purple Sage offer one of the year's outstanding favorites. Someone won your heart, Little Darlin'. Someone won your heart, Little Darlin'. on your all-star Western Theater friends and neighbors, so we'll not keep you waiting any longer. Here comes a return visit from America's great cowboy comedian of the Western screen, Smiley Burnett. (laughs) Ah, 
Well, Smiley, it's nice to be keeping company with you again. Oh, boy, Cottonseed, I sure do like to come visiting here at the All-Star Western Theater. It's lots of fun. Ah, uh, that's good. And, Smiley, today we have a story about a cowboy dentist and how he catches the bank robber. A cowboy dentist? Oh, boy, that's fine. I'm a regular hop-along cavity. <laughs> then let's get a-going. Yeah, Ooh. let's do it. This is the little western town of Hereford Flats. Our story begins in the office of Dr. Smiley Burnett, Hereford Flats' only tooth puller. An ailing customer has just entered. How do you do? Well, how do, Elmer? What can I do for you today? I I want you to pull another tooth, Doc. Oh, well, just sit down here in the chair, then. That's good. Mm. Now, which one do you want me to pull? Oh, uh, just take your choice, Doc. Any of them. Any of them. Huh? Now, what do you mean by that? Uh, I just want you to give me some gas and pull a tooth, that's all. Well, I got to know which tooth hurts. They all look sound as a dollar to me. Oh, don't, don't, none of them hurt. Well, I can't pull a tooth if ain't nothing wrong with it. Oh, that's all right. Just give me some gas and let me sleep a while. Now, what do you want me to do that for? Well, the other day when you gave me gas, I dreamed that Betty Grable was uh, chasing me all over Hereford Flats. Gosh, it was horrible. What was horrible about that? Oh, she didn't catch me. Oh. <laughs> that's too bad, Elmer. Why, it sure is. I, I thought maybe if you give me some more gas, I, I, I'd give her another chance. <laughs> Look, if you'll take my advice, Elmer, you leave girls alone. They don't cause nothing but trouble. Yeah, I reckon you're right, but I just uh, thrive on trouble. I had experience with a couple of women ranch hands once. Well, what happened, Doc? Well, as usual, they was both mad about me. Mm-hmm. So one day they decided to shoot it out to see which one got me. Well, which one got you, Doc? Both of them. One of them got me in the leg, the other one got me in the hip. (laughs) Well, that's that's too bad, Doc. Uh, Well, you're going to give me that uh, Betty Grable gas? Oh, I I can't do it, Elmer. That stuff's too costly. You do look kind of pale, though. Look, do you have trouble seeing when your eyes are closed? Well, uh, come to think about it, I do. Mm-hmm. Does your head go up and down when you nod? Well, now that you mention it, uh, yes, it does. Oh. I'll bet oh, you no. something else. I'll bet you every time you jump in the air, your feet leave the ground, don't they? Well, Dad blamed if you ain't right, Doc. And oh, something yeah. else, every time I close my mouth, my teeth disappear. Oh, that's <laughs> bad, Elmer. That's bad. Now, Doc, don't tell me I ain't healthy. I come from a long line of livers. Oh. <laughs> well, have you ever tried taking vitamins, Elmer? Oh, gosh, I buy them with a dozen, Doc. Well, I've taken so many sunshine vitamins, my stomach is appealing. <laughs> you know what you better do? You better go home and get yourself some rest, oh, Elmer. All right, Doc. I'll see you later, then. Huh? Oh, by the way, though, you didn't pay me for that tooth pulling I gave you the other day. Oh, uh, I ain't got no change on me right now, Doc. Uh, you see, I spent my last nickel. Uh, I had to buy some glasses. Oh, if you needed glasses, then that's all right, Elmer. Oh, I needed them all right. I got tired of drinking out of a bottle. Well, so long, Doc. So long, Elmer. I'll see you later. Oh, come on in, mister. Come on here. You're next, sir. Howdy, Doctor. Howdy. My name is King. Custer King. Well, now, I'm right glad to know you, Mr. Custer King. You're a stranger in these parts, ain't you? Well, you might say that I am. I'm a big cattle buyer from Fort Worth. Mm. I came out of this country to look over the cattle situation. Well, well, we're mighty glad to have you, Mr. King. Now, what can I do for you? I have a molar that's been giving me a lot of trouble, and I thought I'd like to have you yank it out. I'm just the man who can do it. You'll give me gas, of course. Oh, sure. What would you like, regular or ethyl? (laughs) Ethyl. Ethel, and uh, wipe my glasses, please. Yeah. All right, Mr. King, now uh, just give me a minute here to to hook this thing up. Now, just a moment, just a moment. First, you must recite the oath. I I must recite the oath? That's right. Uh Now, hold up your right hand and repeat after me. Uh Uh-huh. I promise to pull the tooth, the whole tooth, and nothing but the tooth. I promise to pull the tooth, the whole tooth, and nothing but the tooth. Now you may gas me. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Well, now, let's... Look, mister, I'll have to take that little box that you have there in your lap. No, 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 I'll just hold it if you don't mind. Oh, might be a new hat, huh? And you're afraid I'll try it on. Yes, yes, that's uh, right. It's a new hat. Uh, let's see, now, now, first I'll look at this tooth. Now, open wide here. Ah, beautiful. Mm. Ah, beautiful, I tell you. Uh, what was it, Doc? Well, I, I was just admiring that cavity in your upper molar. You know, I've seen bears come out of smaller holes than that. <laughs> Doc, uh, can I see you a minute? Oh, go away. I'm busy, Elmer. What is it you want? Well, uh, Papa wants his teeth cleaned. Well, he'll have to come by tomorrow, Elmer. 
Well, he said he wouldn't have time to come by and have it done himself, so I just brought him over. Oh, well, lay him on the table over there. Oh, uh, by the way, Doctor, I'd like to have a glass of water before I take the gas. Would you be so kind? Oh, glad to, Mr. King. Come on, Elmer, you help me. You, you pump and I'll hold the dipper. Oh, all right, Doc. I'll be glad to hold the dipper yeah, for we'll you. We'll be right back, Mr. King. Just take your time, Doc. No hurry. You know, that Mr. King is a mighty big man, Elmer. He's a big cattle buyer from Fort Worth. Go on, start pumping that thing. Yeah, yeah. If I, if I wasn't tied down to my old woman, I might be a big man like him. I've been wanting to ask you, Doc, uh, have I got grounds for a divorce? You married, ain't you? Well, sure, I married. You know that. Then you've got grounds for a divorce. Well, Doc, well, why does it cost more to get a divorce than to get married? Well, it's worth more. Oh, well, that's enough. That don't pump no more. Let's, let's okay. take Mr. King his water. Hey, wait. Wait, Elmer. What's wrong, Doc? Look at that. Look through that door there. See, see what that King feller's doing? Well, what do you know? Playing with a toy balloon. Yeah, he's filling it up with, with sleeping gas. And from my tank. That is the silliest thing I ever saw a grown man doing. Look, he's got it blown up big, ain't he? Yeah, he's putting it in a hat box. Hey, maybe he's going to take it home with him and try to stir up a dream about Betty Grable like I did. Now, look, don't you say nothing about us seeing him. It might be embarrassing to him. Oh, all right, Doc. Come on. Yeah. Well, Mr. King, here's your water. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Now I'll get ready to pull out that old tooth. Well, uh, Doc, I'll come by tomorrow and pick up Pappy's teeth. Okay, Elmer. Goodbye to you. And give my regards to Mrs. Loudermill. I'll do that. Yeah, you know, Doc, it's a funny thing. Funny thing, that tooth has quit hurting. Well, good. When I get through with it, it won't ever hurt again. I, uh... Take it you're a painless dentist? Yeah, that's right, Mr. King. I won't take chances. I must be sure. Oh! What'd you stick me with that pin for? To test you, Doctor. You profess to be painless. But when I drove that pin into you, it proved you were not. I can't do business with a quack. Good day to you, sir. <laughs> that guy is nuts. I wonder why he filled that little old balloon up with that sleeping gas. <laughs> I'm going to pull all of them. Jim, I'm going to make you the prettiest set of false teeth. Will they look natural? I'll make them look the natural they'll ache. Hey, Doc, the bank was just robbed. Robbed? Who done it? Oh, nobody knows, but all I know is Hiram Pettigrew's over there having a hissy well, right then, now. Come on, come on. Let's go see what happened. I got $13 in that oh, bank. Oh, my but God. Doc, you can't leave me like this. I can't, Hal. Will you just grab that drill and start grinding on your own front teeth? That'll help you kill time till I get back. Come on, Elmer, let's yeah, go. let's go, boy. I've always wanted to see how one of these things work. Let's see. Where do you turn it on? <laughs> how, how, how did it happen, Harm? Well, which way did he go? Well, I don't know, Doc. The guy just walked into my bank about an hour before opening time with a big mask on his face and shoved a gun right in my rail. How much did he get? Five grand. Woo! That's more than a hundred dollars, ain't it? Well, that's the strange part about the whole thing. What do you mean? Well, I had about ten thousand dollars on my desk, and he tosses me a little old cloth bag and said, "Stuff fifty hundred dollar bills into that." You mean he left all the rest of it? Every bit of it. Then he goes right out the back door of the bank. No sooner had he gone through the door than I rushed back to see in which direction he was riding. Which way did he go? Well, he didn't go anywhere. He just disappeared. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, Hello oh, there, Doctor. Right, What's going on? Oh, howdy, Mr. King. Somebody just robbed the bank. Well, that is unfortunate. I suppose the bandit was apprehended. Oh. Oh, I don't know nothing about his religion. I just know he disappeared in thin air. Well, that's strange. Did you get any description of the bandit, Mr. Pettigrew? Couldn't tell a thing about him, huh? No. His face was all covered with a mask, and they said he was too excited to notice anything yeah, else. Well, I'm sure everything will work out for the best. I hear that Herford Flats has a splendid sheriff. Say, there's a pretty heavy wind blowing up. Wind? Yeah. Wind? Did you say wind? You heard what the man said. What's so strange about that? Well, nothing. That is, uh, I, I must be going. I want to do a little scouting around over the country today. 
See you later, Doctor. Well, what do you know about that, Elmer? That guy is wind happy. I'm glad it ain't a raining, because he wouldn't have sense enough to get in out of it. <laughs> well, Doc, if you get any strangers under the, the influence of gas and they start telling how they robbed a bank, well, let me know. Well, I sure will, Harv. Oh, I do hope we can find that robber. Come on, Elmer. We better get back to old Jim Glossop. I gotta pull some more of his teeth. Okay, hey, boy. Well, Jim, <laughs> what are you doing? Well, you got say you can make him new teeth for me now. I got these all drilled out, right down to the bone. <laughs> Someone won your heart, little darling. You know, I just wonder why that sheriff ain't been able to catch that old oh, bank robber. Oh, oh, Doc. Doc, my tooth is killing me. Well, howdy, Mr. King. What's wrong? Doc, the tooth is really hurting this time. You gotta pull her out. Oh, are you sure you ain't gonna run out on me at the last minute like you've done the other day? Oh, no. No, Doc. I really want you to pull it this time. Oh, it really hurts. Well, all right, Doc. I'll give you some gas. Let me get this thing ready here, and I'll have you out of your misery in no time at all. Oh, oh the oh, Yanks are coming. Oh, the Yanks are coming. Oh, 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 all ready, Mr. King. Uh, Lay back there and oh, let me put this little contraption right over your nose. Well, That's it. No time at all. You'll be in the arms of Murphy. That's Morpheus. Well, whichever it is, he's going to be hugging you pretty soon. By the way, where have you been the last couple of days since the bank robbery? Oh, just roaming around the country looking for cattle. Oh, Doc. Doc, turn on the gas. I, I want to meet Murphy. No, it's Murphy. I don't care who it is. Haywood, Sheridan, Gobbo. Oh, I'm suffering. Turn on the gas. All right, Mr. King. Here she goes. Asleep now. I bet I could pull his head off and he wouldn't even know it. <laughs> well, I'll just sterilize the nippers here and I'll have that old tooth out of his head before you could recite Beowulf. I want my balloon. I want my balloon. He wants his balloon. <laughs> this guy must be in his second childhood. <laughs> I want $5,000. I want $5,000. He's growing up now. <laughs> my balloon. My $5,000. I want my balloon and I want my five thousand dollars. Yeah, well, I only hope you got two dollars to pay me for pulling this tooth here, buddy. Hey, Doc, 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 guess guess what I just saw. Oh, go on away now. Don't bother me, Elmer. I'm about to pull Mr. King's tooth. A and it's his tooth. Sure it's his tooth. Oh, I ain't talking about a tooth. I'm a talking about that balloon. Hey, Elmer, I don't know who's the craziest, you or this Mr. King. What do you mean? Well, you remember that balloon we seen him fill up with your dental gas the other day? Yeah, so what? The dang thing is a floating around all over town. It is? Well, let her float. Well, I guess I'll have to. The ding-busted thing is uh, way up in the air. Now, how do you know it's the same balloon? Well, uh, I reckon it is. It's the same color, a white one with a big black stripe around it. Well, whatever it is, he sure wants it back. Listen to him. I want hmm. my balloon. <laughs> I want my balloon. My $5,000. I want them. Elmer. Yeah, Doc? A Elmer. Yeah. Uh, where is that balloon floating? Right straight up over your office here, Doc. Looks like it's got a rock tied to it. Quick, Elmer, go get my squirrel rifle. Well, what do you want with your squirrel rifle? There ain't no squirrels around here. Don't ask no questions, lumphead. Just go oh. and get it and hurry. I'll be out front of waiting for you. Now, go on, get oh, going. All right, Doc, I'm a going. I'll be right back. <laughs> Say, what's the idea, Doc, of calling all of us out here in the street like this? Well, you haven't found your bank robber yet, have you? No, but do you know where he is? Well, I might. Here, here's your gun, Doc. Oh, good. Say, what's this all about, Doc? What's the gun for? Well, you see that balloon floating way up there? Right straight above it. Yeah. Now, you watch now. Stand back now. Don't knock my arm up. Here she goes now, boys. Here it comes. All right, now, Hiram, if I ain't mistaken, here it is. Now, now, look here, Doc. Uh, what kind of a prank are you playing? Just look in this little sack here and see. Here it is, Harm. Here it is. Well, that's the sack, all right. And here's the money. Every yeah, bit of how it. About that? Hey, hey, <laughs> what was that explosion? What's going on around here? Why, it's the money, Sheriff. Smiley found it up there. Up where? Up there, floating around in the air. 
Now, look here, Hiram. Hiram, Hiram. Now, look. Now, look, Hiram. Don't do nothing rash. Just take it easy. Grab him quick, horse. He's nuts. He ain't neither nuts now, Sheriff. He ain't neither. I shot it down from up there in the sky about a million feet high with my squirrel rifle. Right, huh? Didn't I? Just uh, don't go a minute. You've all gone crazy. What kind of a gag is this? Now, if you come on into my office, Sheriff, and I'll let the bandit himself prove that we're not crazy. All right. I'm caught. I'll confess the whole thing. You better start talking, Custer, because this is your last stand. <laughs> well, I stuck up the banker here and made my escape out the back door where I had this balloon hidden. I pinned the sack with the money to it and then turned it loose. Well, uh, tell us, King, how did you figure on recovering it? Well, I checked the wind current, and according to my plan, the balloon should have been overturned a pass about 12 noon. My plan was to shoot it down and leave the country a free man. But the doggone wind changed and ruined everything. Well, why did you want to go to all that trouble first? Oh, I figured if I was caught making a getaway and you failed to find evidence on me, you couldn't convict me. Now, just a uh, minute. Uh, we, we just got to hand it to you there, King. You know, come to think about it, that was an awful clever plan you had. Yeah. Sheriff. Yeah. Sheriff, before you take me in, could I have one last request? Well, I reckon so. What is it? Let the doc put me to sleep with the gas once more. What do you want me to do that for? Oh, I was having a wonderful dream. I dreamed that Betty Grable was chasing me all over Hereford Platts. And I want to give her a chance to catch me. Boy, you double-crossing rat! You oh, you are That was lots of fun, Smiley, and I know you folks enjoyed another visit from your old friend of the Western Stream. Heard with our guest star was Al Sloy as Elmer Loudermilk, Joe Forte as Custer King, Foy Willing as Hiram Pettigrew, and Jimmy Dean as Jim Glossop. And now here comes Foy Willing returning Smiley Burnett to the microphone. <laughs> Smiley, I think right about now we ought to have you sing the song that you wrote especially for your appearance on the All-Star Western Theater. Dad. Well, all right, Foy. Suppose you tell the folks about it. But first, let me tell you and all the gang here, as well as all the folks who listen to it, it sure has been lots of fun being with all of you again. Well, that's very nice of you, Smiley, and we want you to come back real soon. That I'll promise. Now let's get on to the singing, huh? Folks, when Smiley learned of the kind of a story we had planned for him today, he got busy and wrote a very special little song with sound effects and all, especially for you in this program. It's entitled The Dennis Song. Smiley, the folks are waiting. All right, boy, here it is. <laughs> I used to make a little money pulling people's molars, but they complained so much I had to quit. They didn't mind the pulling and the yanking that I did, but that grinding wheel just made them throw a fit. It goes zero, well, zero, well, and they start to scoot and lower in the chair. It goes zero, well, and they squirm around and grab and hunk to there. Give them gas, put them under, you'd suppose it'd make them tame. But that buzz and whiz and grind and they can hear it just the same. It goes zero, zero, zero. And they looked at me with murder in their heart. It goes zero, 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 zero. And I feel I'd better head for other parts. Once the feller came to see me and he had a tooth to fill And it hurt him like the mischief, so he said But the gas just made him drowsy and he wouldn't go to sleep So I used my chisel mallet on his head It goes He kept shooting lower, 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 lower It goes And the first thing you know, he's on the floor then his wife came in the door, sees her husband underneath, throws me down on the floor, starts to grinding on my teeth. It goes zero, whoa, zero, whoa, and I'm never going to do it anymore. No more zero, whoa, zero, and I'm taking down that sign above my door. Throw your smiley and come back every time you can. Well, friends of the great cattle kingdoms of the early Old West were known by their brands. 
A ranch brand then had the same significance as a company name today. The men who worked the great cattle ranches guarded the reputation of its brand, just as the bakers of Weber's Bread guard the reputation of Weber's Bread today. Yes, they make very certain that Weber's Bread is always good bread. For breakfast, lunch, dinner, or in between snacks, you'll find that Weber's Bread has a firm, even texture and a distinctive flavor that your entire family will really enjoy. And remember, the quality of Weber's Bread is always consistent. Write down a loaf of Weber's Bread on your shopping list right now. You'll find Weber's Bread on your grocer shelves in the familiar blue gingham wrapper. Buy a loaf and try it, partner. Here they are, folks, Boy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage with the song you all Star Western Theater listeners have asked for time and again. The song that has become almost the national anthem of the West. Men of the West, from out of the West, with your song of the West. Home on the Range. Oh, give me a home where the buffalo where the deer Discouraging world and the skies are not cloudy on the range where the deer and the antelope play, where seldom. From Hollywood, you have heard your all-star Western theater, a V.M. Bayer production starring America's great Western singers, Poi Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage. Our guest star today has been that famous cowboy comedian of Columbia Pictures, Smiley Burnett. My name is Cotton C. Clark. The Riders of the Purple Sage appears through the courtesy of Republic Pictures. Next week, another great star of the West and a story of the West. <laughs> This program came to you from the studios of KNX Columbia Square. KNX. Thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe.